Spring is sprung here in Canada. Getting ready for some open water angling. Uh, it's been a long winter. Uh, didn't get out doing very much ice fishing this winter. Um, things got away from me and uh, with COVID and everything and, uh, and work, it just didn't kind of come to fruition. Uh, I still got out a fair bit, but um, didn't get didn't get out as much as I want. So anyway, uh, what are we talking about today? I have set the stage with some aquatic water adventure themed items. Of course, we've got the Abu Garcia bait caster, you know, hooked up with some what is this fifty pound braided line and I'm, as far as lake lake baits go, a pretty big uh, Rapala X wrap. That was uh, what I was getting at muskies last year. So, oh, and we can't forget this. This thing is sweet. Uh, this is one of my favorite watches. We're going to get into some watch reviews um, as this kind of project chugs along here. But one of my favorites uh, and really kind of an outlier in my collection, this is the Luminox Leatherback Sea Turtle. Um, not a diving watch per se. It's like, I think, a 1,000 meters water resistance. But... Um, just a beautiful watch, super lightweight, super durable. Um, you know, it does have that bezel, so you can keep track of how much air is in your... I've never done any scuba diving, right? Like 99.999% of the guys that have diving watches, I am one of them too. Whether that's a, you know, $15,000 Rolex sub or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, beautiful watch. I think it's like a 39 millimeter um, kind of lug to lug deal. But what makes a Luminox a Luminox is that loom. This thing, I can't, probably can't even, yeah, it's not going to work. But this thing is unreal. Um, I honestly didn't even think you could get that much consistent um, brightness out of, out of just loom alone. Um, unbelievable. I really don't know what they, what they put in there, but uh, it's remarkable. It's almost as if it's, um, the loom is being powered um, by a battery and, and it isn't. Um, Oh, and you know what else makes it an outlier in my collection? It's my only battery-powered, you know, quartz watch. Um, all my others are autos or, or, or manual uh, wines. Um, yeah, so this is cool, and I love it. And so this has kind of been my, my go-to kind of outdoors watch um, as, of, as of last year. Yeah, so what are we talking about today? Uh, out of doors, as always, but life on the water. And in my instance, that's, uh, that's freshwater, freshwater lakes in Canada. So I want to chat a little bit about something that I picked up last year for a project that really didn't come to fruition. And that is the Spyderco Salt 2. Very cool blade. Um, also a unique outlier in my, in my collection because uh, of its design um, and coloration. This is a real blast of uh, of, of high yellow, um, good reason for that, visibility. Um, but what's the purpose of this knife? Well, for me, um, this is all about life on the water or life in the water. I had planned a trip to Hawaii during uh, the coronavirus or prior to the coronavirus, I should say. And uh, that put, the virus put a stop to that, canceled the trip outright, got a full refund. And um, the idea was when I would be swimming to have this sucker um, in my, uh, tucked in my Speedo, and, um, you know, in the event that, you know, you might say, well, and a lot of people do, uh, why do you need a knife? What do you need a knife for? And even more so, what the heck could you need a knife for um, tucked into your swim trunks? Well, okay, so it's just safety. So say you're tangled. Uh, there's a lot of crud in, in, in busy waterways. I mean, have you ever tried to, maybe you haven't, maybe you have. Have you, have you ever tried to break a 50 pound line, okay, with your bare hands? Yeah, you can do it eventually or whatever. Try doing that under duress, under the water, in the dark, you know, as this, this thing is maybe doubled over, tripled over, wound around your ankle. Man, talk about a nightmare situation. So just for the purposes of safety, swimming, yeah, yeah, that's right. I carry on a knife on me while I swim. Um, and it's this one as of late. Um, you know, talking about, you know, Shark attacks, yeah, big eye roll there, I'm sure, from, from you, uh, as you watch this. But the reality is they're very rare, but sore bear attacks. And you best believe when I'm out in the woods, I'll carry bear spray. So unless there's some sort of shark spray that you know about um, that I should be toting along, um, 
I'm sticking with this. And in fact, um, you know, in other videos, we're going to talk about, you know, bears and, and what are real and perceived threats in nature, um, how to handle it. Um, I'll just say one thing, um, you know, bear, bear attacks, bear encounters are relatively rare. But when you start to break it down and you look at the numbers, you think about how many people, and then this is coming, you know, from the Canadian context here where we have one-tenth of the population of the U.S. with 10% larger land mass, so a largely uninhabited country. How many people are out there, right? And so every year, with the limited number of people out in these backwoods and these big, sprawling um, Canadian back country areas there's bear attacks every year so it happens that's why people carry bear spray shark attacks happen i bought this for a shark defense knife laugh it love it hate it make fun of it whatever however trip cancel this has become my go-to fishing buddy um you know serrated blade just makes quick work of any rope and cordage that is used on their small boats that that uh, that i use you know 16 18 foot boats um you know setting up camp cutting it uh, you know uh, 550 cord, whatever. I have been, I have been, uh, you know, I have been um, wrong. <laughs> there's a, there's put it simply. I have been wrong about serrated blades. Um, this is not, you're not going to use it for bushcrafting, but anything involving cordage, whatever. This thing just cuts through it like nobody's business. And uh, you know, people say, oh, I don't want a serrated blade. I got to deal with with sharpening and da, da, da. man, I haven't touched this thing up once. And okay, maybe I am just like, uh, you know, unattentive to my blades, whatever. I'm using them more than I would say, you know, 90% of the guys that are watching this anyway. Uh -huh. So um, in any case, what makes this blade uh, super cool to me is it's corrosion resistance. You got that H1 steel you can see reflecting off there. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, an expert in metallurgy, but the way this steel is designed, it's like virtually corrosion resistant. And I'm in freshwater lakes, um, fresh freshwater bodies. Um, you know, salt will just, you know, expedite that corrosion process like nobody's business. Um, I'm grateful actually not to be in salt water, whether that's for stuff like this or for engine maintenance even. Um, I just, you know, do a quick, uh, maybe an oil change on my outboard and put it in the garage and I'm done. I don't have to drain and clean anything. Anyway, um, stuff will rust in fresh water, no doubt. You uh, have seen it many times, I'm sure, in your own experience. You leave something in your boat, in standing water, that thing is gonna rust like crazy. Not this, however, you go online, you see some videos of guys that have like, I don't know, buried this in, in a swamp and left it for six months and come back and this thing is just like, yeah, it's dirty as all, but um, no corrosion, man. I think, the, I think the clip, I don't know about the clip, however, although it does have a coating on there, but I think the clip got pretty eaten up. Again, not a hard use blade in terms of its like torsional rigidity. So this way, like even now, I don't like to do it, but you can see we've got some like considerable play there. This thing is designed to do one thing and that pull cuts for rope, in my opinion. That's my little blurb uh, under 10 minutes on the Spider Co Salt 2. There's also the Pacific Salt, which I think is larger. I forgot to mention one last thing. This is a fan favorite, no liners. Not even skeletonized liners, no liners at all. And in fact, skeletonized FRN in here. Our illumination, of course, is being provided by the tried and true, now out of date, whatever, uh, Streamlight Micro Stream. This thing is awesome. Do maybe a little review on that. Actually, I'm not because there's enough content on, on the Micro Stream out there as it is. So uh, ultra, ultra light. Oi, almost lost the camera there. Um, just for way of comparison, Let's throw this sucker up on the gram scale. What is an ounce? An ounce of cola? I don't know. This is Canada. So throw this guy on. 57 grams. Let's do kind of a, not a direct, uh, you know, this wouldn't be a, a comparable option per se, maybe. Anyways, it's a Spider Cove, similar size. 102 grams. So like half the weight of, of my favorite. And uh, I'll tell you, we're talking about grams. What's the big deal about grams? Anybody who spends time outdoors knows that if you can cut your weight down by 50 percent you know on any little individual thing heck even a watch not even for big items like if you get a shotgun that's half the weight man that's going to be a game changer out in the field for you know if the day if you're doing some rabbit hunting or upland bird hunting whatever but even your little items cut down on those weights 
and uh, cumulatively, you're gonna have a light outfit, right? A light, a light loadout. So anyway, love this blade. Uh, check out a review. Um, I think it's sharp. And lately, even though I haven't been necessarily out and about in the boat because it's been winter, I rock this thing in the jeans and uh, it's fun. It's fun, it's light, it does the job. Take care.